Well, hello and welcome to The Late Show. And I didn't do that for nothing tonight. I think it's going to be a very special program. If you're watching us right now and you have young people in your family, OK, I'm talking about anybody under the age of 20, they're going to identify with some of the things that they're going to hear tonight on this program. And I just want you to just grab them, text them, email them. If you're watching us on, online, maybe on Facebook, share it and make sure some young people hear the program tonight. It's going to be a very, very different late show. It's going to be very, very powerful. I've got two powerful young men in the studio. I say young. They're making me feel young just sitting here with them. But they are inspiring me. And I know that you're going to be very blessed tonight. One of them you know already. And we're kind of calling this program. We're trying to come up with a name for it tonight. It's special. We're saying it's out there. We're saying the gloves are off because we're going to be talking about some down-to-earth subjects. Particularly, we're going to be talking about sports, specifically boxing mm. and faith tonight. And it's going to be very, very powerful. And don't switch off. Don't switch off because you think, what's, what's the faith and boxing? How does that mix together? Stick around. You'll, you'll learn some things tonight about the power of God and how God is using some young people to change people's lives. Let me go, first of all, to somebody you know very well, Daniel Chan. Bless you, brother. Thanks for coming on tonight. Thanks for having us, Hugh. Really, really good to be here. It, it's a pleasure. It's my pleasure to host this program. And I know we're going to get into you because sure. people may not know why you're sitting there. Sure. They know you as this evangelist, this yeah. healing evangelist, yeah. but they don't really know much about your past. Sure. And you're going to reveal some stuff tonight that's going to be really a blessing. And the other guest tonight is somebody who's really amazing. And by the way, Daniel, yeah. the first time I saw you on, on, on YouTube, I said, hey, we've got to get this guy on Revelation yeah. TV. And here we are now. Do you yeah. remember when remember. we spoke about that, which was fantastic? Prophecy's been fulfilled. Right? That's right. And then a little while ago, my wife and I were looking on YouTube and we saw a young man giving a testimony. Uh, in fact, he wasn't giving a testimony. He was speaking to a, a, a young kid and he was talking to him about his life and giving him advice. And we thought, who is this guy? We've got to get him on. Well, you know what? Here he is. His yeah. name is Stephen, Stephen Addison. Yeah. And Stephen, you're from Box Up Crime, and we're going to find out all about Box Up Crime in Definitely. just a minute. But thank you for joining us thank on the program me, tonight. Yeah. Listen, you. it's going to be a powerful program, and I, I really do believe that it'll be breakthrough for a lot of young Amen. people. And that's what this program's about, guys. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not about me and my generation. It's not even about my generation. It's about the. We're going to. We're going for the youth tonight, right? Come on. So listen. Daniel, yeah. get, let's all of us just watch a little bit tonight about you, St mm -hmm. Stephen, and because I think that'd be a good introduction to the program tonight. Let's mm -hmm. let's learn a little bit more about about box up crime, and, I, and there was something that was featured by the BBC, which we happen to have here with us uh, tonight. So we're going to start with that. Um, Daniel and I are going to sit here and and talk to our friend about it, but you watch this first and be blessed. This is courtesy of the BBC. Watch this. Now, the latest uh, official crime figures in England and Wales due tomorrow are expected to show a rise in violent offences. And one man in East London thinks he has some kind of solution. Stephen Addison works to combine sport and faith. Our religion and ethics editor, Martin Bashir, has been to meet him. I was an overweight kid. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't have any self-esteem. I started trying to be bad as a defence mechanism. Stephen Addison has been hitting back since the age of 10. One of six children, he grew up on a notorious estate in East London. Where did you live? Just blocked, just right here. Just here? He quickly fell out of school and into crime. When you've got stuff like drugs and food being so accessible, like you're, you're, it's, only, it's only normal to get involved in it. He was just another statistic until a strange intervention. And one day I had a dream. You know, I had a dream that I was going to go to prison for murder. You know, and it was so vivid. And in the dream, I believe God spoke to me. You know, God told me, Stephen, if you carry on living your life this way, you're going to end up in jail for murder. He embraced a form of muscular Christianity, took up boxing and established Box Up Crime working with vulnerable young people from all racial and religious groups. Nice, nice. I think math crime is the biggest right now, since there's a lot of people getting stabbed these days. Hey, tell me where you think you'd be without boxing. I probably would be doing something dodgy. He can save a kid's life. The portable boxing ring is a regular here in Barking, where the council is backing Stephen's efforts. 
and there are plans for the same in Manchester and Birmingham. People don't go out thinking that I want to kill somebody, I want to use a knife. They go out because they feel they're an outcast. And one of the things I really believe in and what Stephen's doing is saying to people, look, be a rebel, but be a rebel with a cause, not without a cause. You know that social services teams, that juvenile offending teams, are working day and night to try and stop young people from moving into a life of crime. How does faith in God make any difference? When I first changed my life around, at the age of 20, and I got exposed to the Holy Spirit, it completely transformed me. What I have had is a dependency that God's got this, and I believe that this is going to work. Father God, thank you so much for this great session we just had today. Thank the puncher who became a preacher <laughs> and proved that some dreams really do come true. Martin Bashir, BBC News, in East London. Well, I'm sure you must have some comments that you want to make about that before we speak to these, these two young men who are doing great things for the gospel and great things in the community for the young people. Let me remind you that this is a live and interactive program, so you can give us your opinions, you can email us or text us, the details are on your screen. Do that, and at some point, later on, we're gonna get into some of those things, but right now, I wanna get into, uh, let's go to you first of all, please. I feel like I'm on that program, the gloves are off. <laughs> By the way, I'm a huge boxing fan, guys, if you didn't know that already, you know now. And uh, I'm just so, it's blessed, I'm so blessed to be here. Now. Let's get into this. First of all, can I just ask your age? I'm 28. I think I, because I'll tell you something, what you're doing I think is miraculous. Wow. I think it's truly miraculous. Talk to us about where you're coming from. Mm. Now, you said some of the testimony there and, and we could see it coming through. Mm. But take us back to the point. I want to talk about the point where boxing and faith began to really yeah. work together in your life. Take us wow. back to that. So, you know, I grew up in a rough community and I was an overweight kid. I didn't have no confidence in myself. I didn't believe in myself, you know. So when I, I, when I, when I got to school, I was getting bullied in school. You know, people were making fun out of me. People were calling me all sorts of names because I was dark skinned. People were making fun of me because I was dark, yeah. you know. So I had no confidence, no self-esteem. So I thought, how do I boost my confidence? So I started being bad. I started doing stupid things. And eventually I got kicked out of school. And my head teacher told me I can never step foot in my school again. And when I got kicked out of school, that's when I got introduced into crime. You know, and it was like school's meant to be a safety net. But then when you come out of the safety net of education, you fall into the safety net of crime. And that's the cycle a lot of young people go through. What sort of crime did you get? So I was involved I was involved in a lot of like uh, a lot of drugs, fraud, robberies, and wow. it was like a lot of negative things. And you know, but growing up, when I felt when I started making money from that lifestyle, I found so much confidence in it. You know, all of uh, throughout my whole childhood, you know, I weren't good at football, I weren't good at nothing. You know, but when I started making money, like I was finally getting something right. You know, and I was, and I thought, yeah, you know what, this is me, this is what I'm gonna do. You know, so I was doing that lifestyle for from the age of 15 to 20, and so many times, so many things happened to me. You know, but. You know, I actually thought that this is, this is where I was going to end up my life, you know. Mm. And then one day at the age of 20, I had a dream that I was going to go to prison for murder. Mm. And God spoke to me so vividly in the dream, saying, Stephen, if you carry on living your life this way, this is where you're going to end up. And I saw myself in the old Baileys with, uh, alongside a few of my mates. And the judge said, you guys have got life in prison for murder. And then God spoke to me in the dream, said, if you give your life to me, Stephen, I'll make you a role model to young people all over the world. And through your story, you help kids come off the streets and out of gangs. So, so I woke up from the dream, I shared it with my mum. I said, Mum, I had this weird dream that I went to prison for murder. Your mum's a Christian. My mum's a Christian. Yeah. You know, and straight away, my mum was like, Stephen, you've got to give your life to God, you've got to give your life to God. And I was like, ah, oh, that's all long, I don't want to do that right now. You know, everything was going right. I was making a lot of money from the lifestyle. But a week before I had that dream, my house got raided. Police came to my house around five o'clock in the morning, looking for like looking for drugs, looking for all that kind of stuff. You know, so my mum was in a place where she'd been praying for me. You know, so I believe God answered her prayers by revealing that dream to me. Yeah. And I ended up going to my, back to my mates, telling them, "Yo, I had this weird dream went in prison for murder." They all started laughing at me. So Steve, we ain't killed no one. We're just making money. I kept telling them, and then cut a long story short, I ended up going to church, and I ended up giving my life to the Lord in church. After giving my life to the Lord, I. I said to God, I had an honest conversation with him. I said, God, I'm going to come to your kingdom, but I want you to use me. Yeah. 
Like, I don't, I don't want to come here and not do anything in your kingdom, you know, because I believe when I was in the devil's kingdom, the devil used me, yeah. you know, to make, like, when I was doing all of the crime and all of that, and I said, God, use me. I give my whole being to you. You know, and the first thing I picked up in the Bible was Philippians 4.13. Mm. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. <laughs> That's you the know? right one, isn't it? And that just gave me the confidence and the motivation to, to start boxing, to lose weight. I lost so much weight. It gave me the confidence and the motivation to go to university, to study business. And before you know it, two years later, I'm boxing, I'm winning fights, I'm in university studying business. How, how did that, that, that interview with the BBC come about that we yeah. just watched? How did that happen? Uh, wow, that's a, that is a... So what happened there was, um, I, had, I, was, I was losing a lot of young people as a result of me doing that. We box up crime, we work with a lot of young people involved in gangs. And one of my young people got murdered, you know, and that really affected me and I, was, I went away. I went away, I went to go and pray and I went to go and fast in Ghana. So I went away for one month for, for like a retreat. And when I was in Ghana, three prophets said the same thing to me. They said to me, when you get back to London, God's created a platform for you to speak. I'm thinking, what is this? Second I get back to London, um, I'm just walking down the streets and I'm speaking to a young kid that it looks like he's involved in that lifestyle. And before you know it, I'm sharing my story with that kid and uh, his dad takes the phone out and then his dad starts filming me actually talking to his son. You know, and before you know it, um, the guy, the, the son gives his life to the Lord and that video goes viral. I saw it, I and, saw it. I actually saw it, my, I said my wife and I and watched that video and we thought, is this for real? Yeah. Did you see it, Daniel? I didn't see that. It was amazing. Yeah. And yeah. then literally straight after that video, I remember the, what the prophet said to me, that yeah. God's created a platform for you to speak. And then the following week, I had a dream that I was doing a documentary with BBC, you know, and I woke up from the dream and one of the trustees at Box Up Crime phones me up and says, Stephen, I've just had the dream that you're doing the documentary with BBC. I said, what? And then following, I think, a couple of hours later on that day, that same day, I received an email from Martin Bashir saying, Stephen, I believe the Lord has spoken to me. I want to do, um, I want to cover your story on BBC. And literally, all of this was within the dream. So, so listen, um, I, I, I know we've got Daniel here, but I just, I need to get a few yeah, more yeah. facts out of, out of Stephen about how this whole box up crime Actually, began. Because let me tell you something, for me, I'm really, like I said, it's a real blessing to do this because I have a concern. Mm. I'm sure, Daniel, you share yeah. this concern. Maybe we, we come from different angles, but we all have the same concern. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's what's happening out there on yeah. the streets. That's what concerns me. Actually, it concerns me even more mm. than the whole political atmosphere at the moment. To me, there's some, there's some down-to-earth stuff that's going on with our youth on the streets. And it wow. seems as if certain people are almost blind to it. They just don't even realize what's going on. Talk to us, talk to the viewers. Tell us about what's going on on the streets right now with the young people. Why does Box Up Crime exist? Tell us. You know, our motto is rebuilding misguided dreams. Every young person's got a dream, but it gets misguided because of their community, where they're from. You know, these young kids out there, you know, they're going through so much, so much right now. We've lost 140 young kids last year alone. In what place? Is that it, just in the it, London? Across area? London. 140 kids have been murdered across London. Oh, Why are these kids being murdered? Because the devil knows that they're carrying something. Every single one of these kids are carrying visions, they're carrying dreams, they're, they're leaders, you know, and they've all, every single one of these kids have all got big things in them. You know, when I was involved in my uh, stupidness, going back when I was uh, in, my, in my teenage years, the devil knew what I was carrying. He knew that I had box up crime in me. But what he wanted to do, he wanted to kill me so that, all the souls attached to, yeah. to me kill will, your will, destiny. Will, will kill my kill destiny. destiny. And all of these young kids in London, they've all got visions in them. But the devil knows that. There's no point the devil attacking, like, no offence, but eight-year-olds and 70-year-olds. And he needs to attack the young generation that still need to bear their fruit. Sure. So that's why he's targeted <coughs> this, young, this young generation. So, so what was the thing behind what, why box up crime what, did you think that maybe by getting the kids out and getting them... Because I know, listen, let me, you go back to Muhammad Ali, yeah. go back to uh, people like, uh, name them, uh, George Foreman, mm -hmm. um, uh, Mike Tyson, um, yeah. Evander Holyfield. A lot of these guys came through programmes like yours. Exactly. Well, they, were, they, 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 came, they were taken off the streets mm -hmm. and, and introduced to boxing yeah. as a way to uh, get rid of their frustrations wow. and maybe actually what it made them was millionaires. Yeah. But is that what you, your heart was behind this, that maybe you thought you could get them off the street and by getting them to channel their... What was it? Or is it a spiritual thing? Tell so, us about it. With Box Up Crime, how did Box Up Crime come about? So, like I said, I had a dream that I was going to go to prison for murder, you know, and 
two years after having that dream, I've, I've started boxing, I've fo I'm focusing. I ended up winning the British Amateur Championships. And I'm in the back page of the newspapers for winning gold. But on the front page was four of my friends. They got life in prison for murder. Are you serious? That's so, and from on that the dream, same newspaper? On the same newspaper. So God spoken to me. God had spoke to me clearly. He said, Stephen, if you don't give your life to me, you are going to go to prison for murder. Yeah. And so God gave me an opportunity. He gave me grace to have oh, a second oh, chance. For the young people, how do you know that was God speaking to you? Because it has to be God. What, you know, it wasn't my mum speaking to me. It wasn't my dad speaking to me. God appeared to me in a dream, you know, and he said to me very clearly, he said, if you give your life to me, Stephen, I will make you a role model to young people across the world. And through your story, people will come off the roads. Give your life to me. And he also really, really specifically said, Stephen, if you don't give your life to me, the devil wants to take you to hell. Wow. The devil's going to make you go to jail for life for murder. This is what the devil's got planned for you. You and know what I see in your eyes, Stephen? I see the I see the passion of an evangelist. Yeah. Let me bring, let me ring you in on this sure. point. Yeah. Can you see it in his eyes? Yeah, for sure. You can see the passion. Definitely. You can see yeah. I can see him welling up yeah. when he began to talk about yeah. what the plan for the devil against his life yeah. was. Let me. I'm doing the gloves are off just for a second. So <laughs> yeah. let me let me let me turn to. And yeah. you're not opponents. You're on the yeah. same side. Thank <laughs> Absolutely, goodness. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but, but I mean, this is uh, this is awesome, guys. I'm really I'm really blessed. But tell your story because you've got a boxing story as well. Yeah, I have, I have. And you know what? It's funny because like, we you, when I'm on a pulpit or on an interview, you condense it so much, and I miss out such a chunk yeah. Yeah. that I'm going to be speaking about today. Yeah. So yeah, I was on the way to prison for eight years at 19 years old. Wow. And just around the wrong people. I'd been boxing since 15, so I knew how to look after myself. But, and boxing would help me in a way to keep fit, to, you know, etc. But then when we'd get out and about, drink, we'd use them weapons in a negative way. And it was while I was on a night out when I was 19 years old, we got into a fight and, yeah, cut a long story short, we put the guy in the vehicle. We were all, all under the influence of drugs and alcohol. And we got arrested and charged for kidnap. And it was a very scary point in my life. I hit rock bottom. And while I was rock bottom, I um, moved to London. I moved to North London. When I moved to London, I began boxing. Um, I was already boxing in, in my hometown of Bedford. Now I'm boxing for Tottenham. And um, I was just there, dedicated everything to it. But deep down, I was still broken. It was helping my flesh. And mentally, it was kind of putting me in line. But spiritually, I'd still go out, partying, <laughs> fighting, and etc. And this is all while I'm on bail. Yeah. And then it finally happens. And you know, the, the judge calls us in for trial at Amersham Crown Court and it hits me you know I'm depressed I'm hurt and cut a very long story short um, I was boxing at the Harangay Box Cup I lost the fight and I got home and it was just everything piled on I'm on bail uh, I've just lost the fight just you know I'm trying but I'm not really getting there and it was while I was rock bottom I gave my life to Jesus a friend who lived a couple of doors away from me said Daniel I know someone who can get you out of this depression this bondage this court case it's Jesus Christ and I laughed at him at first because we've heard about Jesus yeah. I, you know I had family that were Catholic and Christians I had friends that were Muslim I heard about the prophet I heard about the baby in the manger yeah. but I had no relationship with God and yeah from there I gave my life to Jesus and I thank God for boxing yeah. but still to this wow. day I thank God for it was like grace you know yeah. before I've been saved yeah. he was he was preparing me he was working yeah. on me because mm. now I'm in the ministry on the front line like yeah. you on the streets evangelizing etc them weapons of tenacity, mm. passion, fearlessness. And what boxing did in me, it built up a no-quit mentality. Yeah, yeah, so when yeah. I get betrayed, even yeah. in the ministry, on, when man, I don't get recognised, when, when we're not getting that pat on the back, when we're yeah. not getting approval from man, yeah. you know what? Boxing, God used boxing to develop a no-quit mentality. Oh, if that devil don't get cast out in 10 minutes, I'm not going to give up. If that sickness doesn't go in the next five years, I'm going to keep on wow, praying. On. I'm not going to quit. And I thank God for boxing because it built a fight in me, a passion wow. in me. Yeah. And that passion got lit by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Wow. And I've never been the same. Wow. So amazing. just, yeah, boxing, you know, it's been incredible. And I've got stories upon stories about times where I had to kick into that gear. 
you know, that fifth gear of yeah. just getting into right. that, you know, that tunnel vision. Yeah. But you've got the anointing this time. Yeah. Come on. You, you want to fight, but you've got the victory this time. Yeah. And it's from a different place. Yeah. But nevertheless, you've got to exercise that victory. And, yeah, we've been in a few scenarios be be like that. Be because it is a fight, isn't it, Stephen? It's, there's a fight that's going on on the yeah. streets. You, you, you're fighting for the young people. For and, and, and it's funny, because here we are. <laughs> Even I have a boxing, boxing story. I got knocked out, but I have a boxing story. Yeah. And I still have a passion for boxing. But what I see is two young men, right? You fight, you fight in the in the evangelistic sphere. Sure. You fight in you, you you're on the streets praying for people yeah. and getting people healed. You're on the streets getting these young people focused and getting them yeah. out of a, a crime mentality and getting them into a mentality of, of, of bettering themselves. Yeah. And you're using faith to do that. It's yeah. a fight, isn't it? It's a fight. You know, and these kids, you know, they have no access to hope. Come on. You know, and they live in an environment where it's completely bleak. Right. You know, they can't see nothing. They can't see a better future. You know, and you know, what is the gospel? The gospel is love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Would you want your own son to be in the country? You know, they call it countryside. They're out there selling yeah. drugs. Would you want your own son in the countryside for the past three weeks? Mm. Sending drugs to, to, to drug users. Would you want your son sitting in jail for life? Mm. Would you want your own son in the morgue? No. So as as the body of Christ, we need to start stop looking at these kids as, you know what, that's not my child, that's a personal problem, and start saying, you know what, I want to invest in that kid, I want to give love to that kid. So that's what we do at Box Up. We try and love these children as if they are our own. Yeah. You know, we love, and, and how do we love them? We, we walk that extra mile with them. Yeah. You know, we, 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 if you're going to get your, leg, your, your shoes dirty, we're getting our shoes dirty too. But we're going we're gonna to take you out of that mud, you know? And a lot of these kids, like, like I've said, I've lost seven kids, yeah. you know? That have been that have that have talk, been part talk, of. Talk about that reality because I, t I just don't think some people some people just don't get it. Okay, I mean I'm not trying to knock the body of Christ yeah. here. We love the church, but some people just don't get what's mm. going on out there. There's a serious problem on serious the streets. Serious problem out there. I mean, you know, we we have entered a phase in in the UK where. We're now beginning to see shadows of what 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 America was like mm. in, in uh, at certain times mm. with gun crime and yeah. knife crime that's going on, and this is an effective ministry mm. where yeah. a, a young man is going out there and getting people. Talk to us about. Give us some examples of people that you've helped off the street, and uh, and and through box up crime, mm. they're actually seeing a change in yeah. their lives. Talk to us about that. You know. For example, young people, all of them, they all start off good. Yeah. All young people start off good. They all start off with a dream. Yeah. You know. But then what happens is as they grow up in their community, like it gets, it really gets misguided. <clears throat> you know. And for example, you know, young kid Benny, he came to box up at the age of twelve, and just being with him, like journey with him, like being around him. You know, I've seen him develop into not just a young man, but a young leader. Wow. You know, Benny only yesterday had his, uh, had the national championships wow. for London, and he won it. He won it. Wow. He, he won gold. You know, and he's he now he, he's now a London champion. I had another. I've, I've, we've got so many young leaders. We've we've got young people that they probably just didn't get it right. You know, and they're still going on their journey. You know, we've got young people that are. That you know they've they've just come out of prison, and when they come out of prison, the first person that they want to phone is box up crime is myself. Wow. You know, Stephen, I want to change my life around. So we've got one kid right now, Daniel. You know, he's 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 had it hard, you know, but he he knows now he cannot go back, you know, because he knows where it is when he goes back. He knows it's only death, you know. So he now wants to he now wants to focus. He's just recently given his life to the Lord, wow. you know, and he's now shadowing me every single day. He's coming into meetings with me, you know. Like obviously you got to, you you got to take your time and be patient with them. I remember the first meeting he came to, he came in a full blown tracksuit. I said, Yo, Daddy, you know we we got to put a seat on for these kind of meetings. But you know you you have to be patient with them. Yeah. You have to be patient with them because these kids, I understand and I recognise myself in every single one of these kids. Well, listen, you know? I want to, let me read you a few emails and, 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 and I, want, I want us to be thinking tonight about how, you know, how we can speak into the young people's lives yeah. tonight. But you know something, I just want to say this, and I said this before the programme, is that there's something that's very powerful that I say about you both, is that you're both yourself. You, you both, you're not trying to be somebody else. You're not trying to be some some evangelists you're not trying to, you're not dressed up in suits and yeah. you know you're just being yourself and i think this should encourage a lot of people because you know when you're you 
God can use you. Yeah. You know, we were talking about that before the program. Mm. When you just be you, when yeah. you to, you know, you had boxing, that's what you had. You know, what do you have in your hand that you wow. can bring to the Lord? Some people think that they have nothing to bring. Yeah. Wow. But you know, what you have yeah. is a powerful tool that God can use. Yeah. Um, Jeff says, <laughs> bless you, Jeff. This is nice to hear from Jeff. He says, uh, Daniel and Stephen, he says, wow. He says, these two young men are inspiring the pants off me. Absolutely fantastic. This is the real deal. How God, it, how good is God to send us these two inspiring young men yeah. for such a time as this. Thanks wow. for that, uh, Jeff. Thank you. Also, Yemi, your good friend Yemi writes to say, great program, thank God for the lives of these two young men. He says, you're pastors already. Is that a passion of you? Let me ask you this, because again, because that, that's an interesting point. Yeah. See, because is, is it about that? Is it about being pastors or is it about using the gift that God has given you? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll ask both of you this question, because I don't know what you do on the streets, <coughs> but do you have a passion to be a pastor? You know what? I get so many invites to preach in churches. Yeah. So like, I'm, I'm probably preaching in church at least twice a month. Like, I get invited to different, uh, different parts of the world. And, you know, I've just come back from New York, actually, two, three days ago. You know, but I love, I, I love uh, communicating what God's done. You know, it's not about a new job title for me. Or, yeah. This is, just, like you said, you have to be you. You know, and for me, being me is just like being real and being humble with what God's doing. Yeah. You know, and if I can communicate God's goodness through my story and through my through my uh, through my lifestyle, even more more so, you know, like to win souls, that's more important. Amen. You know, so at any whatever, if God sends me out, I'm going. You know, we're just servants at the end of the day, exactly. ready to be sent. Yeah, yeah. Here's, here's one. I want to. I want to ask you the same question and the same thing. But let me just read this email. It says, "Dear Hugh, our Lord Jesus delivered me from 30 years of drink, a drug addiction. Praise God. But my addictions have left me with mental problems. Would you please pray for my healing? And and a healing for broken bones I got when I was drunk. So I know that you you you're. I've seen you on the streets, sure, yeah. ministering to people and praying for people. So. Is it about being a pastor, is, or is there something? Is that your desire? Are you a pastor? No, it, what you... It's an, I, I'm a full-time evangelist. It's, yeah. it's an interesting one. I've been offered to pastor a few times, mm. and I have a group of young guys I disciple that I take with me on the yeah, streets well. and when I'm speaking in churches and etc. Um, you know what, Brother Hugh? I think for the last couple of decades, what I've observed as I've read memoirs and done a bit of research, it's like there's been a dysfunction between the pastor and the evangelist. Yeah. It's like the evangelists are known as the very few that are out on the streets, a little bit crazy crazy, a little bit radical, a little bit out there. But I believe in this day and in this hour that that dysfunction is being broken and it's time for evangelism wow. to not just be an event, but to be in the culture of the church. Wow. Yeah. We need to put it in the culture of the church. Because what I don't get, Stephen, is how can we go to five Christian conferences a year, mm -hmm. four <coughs> church services a week, mm -hmm. read three devotionals a day, mm -hmm. and, you know, listen to two worship songs an hour, but tell not one person about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Somewhere something yeah. has gone wrong. Our big brothers, Peter and John, were crucified upside down for this gospel. Right. Yeah. And there's us in the UK now, and the church want to get quiet when it's funeral time. Yeah. How pastors need to, you know, there needs to be a call of repentance even yeah. for pastors who can't give an altar call at a funeral, mm. where eternity true, and, true. and death is on the conscience of the, the mm. guests, yeah. the unbelievers, and we're given a watery message and just, you know, respecting a few people. Do that. Don't get me wrong. Wrong. Yeah. But as leaders, we've got Balance. to be accountable yeah. and bring wow. in evangelism. Yeah, yeah. It's time for evangelism to come back into the church of the UK. Mm -hmm. To answer your question, obviously I'm, I'm an evangelist, um, and I know I know Stephen is as well. We respect pastors and love pastors, but I believe in this season, Jesus the evangelist is, mm. is, is manifesting yeah. wow. in this day and hour. I want to talk to you guys about this because you know, this you know, boxing is a very it's a masculine thing. And, you know, some people associate boxing with violence and uh, the, the, they have the thought pattern that yeah, this is not, it's not Christian. Yeah. You, you know what I'm coming yeah. from? <laughs> yeah. like, so if, you, if you're into boxing, I'm sure people are looking and saying, Pastor Hugh, he likes boxing. What's that about? Yeah, yeah. Now, talk to us about that because is there something, I don't know, the best way to put it is maybe, are we almost, in a sense, <laughs> Almost a bit effeminate with the gospel that we that we preach. What's wrong with men being men? What's mm. wrong with yeah. with men being involved in sports yeah. like boxing and so on and so forth? How do you see this? Because I know I see it that I see it that um, you know 
when you look back in the Bible, you see many fighting yeah, yeah. men. David was a fighting man. Yeah, right. You see many fighting men throughout the Bible. But of course, today, you know, we're kind of civilized, so we don't have those kind of thoughts. Mm. How do you see it? You know, boxing is a great art, you know, to be, uh, if it's used in the right way, mm -hmm. you know, and, and all, boxers is, is a controlled environment, mm -hmm. you know, so when you're talking about working with kids that are very disengaged, that have been kicked out of school, kicked out of their home, kicked out of their community, just come out of prison, these kids, what is the best way you can engage a kid with so much aggression, so much, like, energy? How do you engage that kid? You bring him to a sport like boxing where he's taught how to manage his energy levels, he's taught how to control his anger, he's taught how to, like, he's taught the art of discipline, not the art of boxing, the art of discipline. When I started boxing, nobody had to tell me, Stephen, stop drinking. Wow. You know, my, before my pastor told did, me to stop got, drinking, yeah. Yeah. Before, before anyone told me to stop drinking, it was <laughs> my coach that told me, you're not allowed to drink, Stephen. You know, my coach told me, you're not allowed to smoke weed, Stephen. You know, it was my coach that said, you're not allowed to be sleeping around. Mm. You know, and these are basic disciplines that are fundamental principles in the Bible already in terms of character, you know, how to abstain from all of these things. Yeah. Now, the, the sport of boxing, it reinforces all of these disciplines into a young person. Mm. So I get a lot of schools send me like their, their, their most challenging kids and then they, they come to me and we, we they say, don't worry, we're going to work for them and we'll start the program. And before you know it, at the end of the six weeks, you see a complete different student. See, that's really interesting. So basically, you, you, you're dealing with the, the students that no one else wants to deal with. Uh, it's like you dealing with the, with the prayer needs that no one else wants to deal with. You know, you, you, you're dealing with the, with the, the young kids, the, the, the ones that, that would... It, where would they end up? They'd end up in prison? They'd end up in, in jail, maybe dead? The, the, the cycle, like, this is where the problem really stems from. The cycle in London, in UK, is that you're, you're a disengaged kid. So you get kicked out of class. Yeah. Once you're kicked out of class, you go to the PRU, which is the pupil referral unit. When you're at the pupil referral unit now, you meet other naughty kids, like all of, the, all of the naughty kids in the whole community. You meet them all in this one place. Now, you learn about crime there, you learn about, you learn about uh, gangs there, you learn about so much stuff in the pupil referral unit. And once you're kicked out of the pupil referral unit, you're now, you're now set in the streets. And the next step from the pupil referral unit is prison. So a lot of kids have gone through that same cycle, kicked out of school, pupil referral unit, on the streets, in prison. So what we try to do at Box Up, we try to intercept just before they get to the Prus. So we work for them in the schools. We work for them in mainstream schools and we also work for them within the Prus. So that way we're working with all of these kids and we're trying to give them that discipline, give them that kind of philosophy. You know, you don't have to live your life this way. That's amazing. You know, and, you know, and wow. even more so than preaching and, and preaching to them. Preaching is very important. We do it in the right context. Yeah. But when we're in these schools, we have to show what Jesus looks like. Yeah. You know, through our actions, through, through our conversations, through the way we talk. Yeah. You know, and how does Jesus look? He looks like love. Yeah. Yeah. He looks like motivation. He looks like hope. You know, and that's what these kids don't have. They don't have these things. They don't have no love. They don't have no hope, and they don't have no motivation. It, 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 must, it's, what, what, it must be, you have to have a spirit of boldness to go into schools to, to do that, what you're doing. Yeah. And Daniel, let me bring you back in at this sure. point, because when we talk about the spirit of boldness, I think about guys like you. Because sure. I, I, I used to watch those videos of you on the street, mm. and, and you were so bold, yeah. right? I mean, first of all, it's very difficult to, to challenge someone, you know, on the street and say, you know, <laughs> you know, let me pray for you now or God's going to heal you now and so on and so forth. That's boldness. Yeah. Do you think that some of the boldness that you walk in has come from your conditioning as well? Wow. Your, your, I don't know, is it the Holy Ghost mm. or is it partly also mm. the fact that you come from this fighting yeah. background? What you made know, you bold? What an amazing question. You know, boxing has played a huge part in my spiritual journey. Wow. And it's just like, you know, someone once said to me, you know, how can you just randomly go up on the streets and pray for people? Yeah. You don't know if they're going to get healed. You might get embarrassed or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, I know that when God was... It's exactly like you said, like, there was a, a discipline of the flesh wow. where my flesh is not dominating me. I'm now dominating my flesh. Mm. It's like when you start walking of the Holy Spirit and stuff like that, the Holy Spirit leads the way. And through boxing, there was a moulding, there was a discipline. So now I'm using that in the kingdom. Come on. And now 
now, when I'm praying for the sick, I'm not going to give up. There's a fight. Yeah. Mm. And, and, you know, a lot of people pat me on the back, you know, for, for what God's done and, and doing in our ministry. But I want to let the viewers know, boxing has had a part to play in that. Go for it, you know, then. and, you know, I remember once I was in Poland, I was sharing with you earlier on, a lady, some people might not understand the spirit realm, but I'm just going to say it as it is. This yeah. is real, genuine, it happened. Go for it. We, 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 I did an altar call, and I said, if anyone wants to give their life to Jesus, come out. A lady came out, a young, little, petite girl, and she was about 20 years old, and she was manifesting in a bizarre way. She was trying to twist her neck back. It just looked really, really demonic, like one of them horror movies you'd watch back in the day. And anyway, the pastors, you know how some pastors take them to the back and after the service they were praying mm. and the demon spoke through the young girl and this is what the demon said. I know what you pastors are like. After 20 minutes of prayer, you'll give up. Wow. Yeah. And that did something to me. Wow. I thought, wow, this demon. It was sounded like a male voice. It was just clearly a demon mocking and just making a mockery of the pastors. And I said to my team that travelled with me, right, if we've got to stay in here for 24 hours, oh, we're staying in here for 24 hours. This foul, defeated devil is leaving today. Wow. And we prayed, and after around three hours of just reading scripture, praying, and the demon was spitting at us, manifesting. But when that girl got free, wow. there was a glow. She was jumping. It's gone. It's gone. And even till this day, she now leads worship. She's a worship leader. But she was battling for ages. But that fight, yeah. that 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 warrior kind of spirit. You've had people spit at you and, 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 yeah. and slap you yeah. before, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that's not going to bother me. But yeah. to, to, to the normal leader, I don't know, maybe that little bit of tenacity and fight might not be there. But this is why I say that, you know what? It's good to have aggression. Yeah. Smith Wigglesworth once said this, a great man of God. He said, speak to sickness as if it's the devil himself. Don't beg it to go, command it to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. And sometimes as Christians, there's this kind of picture where we're just all hippies and we're just going about gently loving people. Sometimes we've got to be rough. Sometimes we've got to be strong. Right, and when there's a the child rushes. going into the road, we've got to run with all our strength and save him. And yeah, you know, boxing's played a huge part. One thing I like to say is we hate the sin, but we love the person. Yeah. We hate the sickness, but we love the person. Let's have an aggression and a tenacity towards the things of the enemy. And, and with that being built in me and molded in me, I believe it's one of the reasons why we've seen the healings we've seen and, and God move obviously you know it's not the formula per se but there is a level of sacrifice and discipline wow. that that had to be for the anointing to flow a certain way yeah. and yeah so boxing so, has been a blessing it's funny you saying that you know because I've got a very good friend he knows who he is he's probably watching he told me that he was he, he's a pastor of a church and he said he was battling this this demon one night and he said it was hours and hours I don't know how many hours it took he said when he was finished he said he could hardly move because wow. he was he was physically weak wow. so he started going to the gym from that point onwards wow. so he kind of did it in the reverse way yeah, yeah. I just wanted to there's a couple more emails that's coming in that I'll, I'll read out but I realize people are so engrossed in what what they're hearing they probably don't want to but you can email please do email I'll, I'll, I've got a bit of time so I'll read a little bit of, uh, of of your emails if you put them in if you've got something you want to say uh, maybe a question to address either of these gentlemen do it now, and I'll see if I can read those out. But, you know, earlier on, you mentioned about Philippians 4.13, and you know what came to mind? What came to mind for me, I don't know how old you, you were at this point, but I remember when um, Evander Holyfield... Do you remember that? Yeah, did, remember you that. that? Yeah, yeah, did, did you ever see that? Did you ever see it? Did you ever see it? If Ander Holyfield goes out against Mike Tyson, yeah, yeah wow. And uh, I'm the only one of all my friends, and this happens a lot with me. You know, it happened with Tyson Fury the other day, sure, yeah. where you know I'm the only one who says, you know what? He's going to win. Wow. Because I know something about this man that you come don't on. know, and wow. I knew he was a believer, and I saw him come out with this sash on. It was in the middle of the night. I'll never forget it. Middle of the night, it was uh, um, uh, Barry McGuigan commentating, and he's at the sash on, and everyone in the studio trying to find out what does this mean? Philippians 4:13. It said Phil 4:13. Wow. And they control, they control, say, what, 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 what's that about? What, 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 who, 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 and somebody in the studio obviously is a Christian, and they said uh, it's 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Wow. I'm watching this thing at three o'clock in the morning. I've gone, <laughs> the gospel just went out through boxing. <laughs> it's true. Did, did you yeah. see the end of the Powerful. Tyson Fury yeah. fight yeah. the indeed, other day? Indeed. Did you see what Incredible. Tyson did? At the yeah. end of the fight, yeah. he goes to Deontay Wilder. He says, Deontay, I bless you in the name yeah. of Jesus. <laughs> exactly. And I've gone, what did I just see? Is it wow. Millions of people all around the world got to see wow. somebody say some words yeah. that you would normally only get to see in a church environment. So true. And you know what I love about Tyson Fury and, yeah. and kind of these guys? I love it when they say Jesus and they don't just say God. Mm. God can be any God, but the power is in yeah. the name of Jesus. Yeah. Um, so good that you And, and that you know, up. Tyson Fury, he says something profound in his post-fight interview. Yeah. He says, I want to thank my Lord and Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah. Andre yeah. Ward does the same, yeah, yeah. and a couple of other Christian boxers do the same. And God Ter can Terence be... Terence Crawford, another exactly. one, always does it. Exactly. But Lord and Saviour, they're... they're that in their remit, they're being themselves yeah. and they're reaching millions. They're reaching wow. people we won't reach and, yeah. and, and the typical Pentecostal evangelists won't reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, I, you know, I commend, you know, these I, guys. I, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, because I was watching your thing earlier on that you did on the BBC. The thing that really struck me about you is, I, I, I don't know, let me tell you this and I'll say it's live. I don't know if you know how effective you are. Because <laughs> you, you, I think you're just being you. Yeah. You know, this is, for the viewers who are watching, let me just explain something. This, there's no pretense going on here. These are just real guys. And I want to encourage you, if you're watching this program, and say this. You know, you can be you mm, and yeah. be used of God. You don't have to try to be somebody else mm, to be good. used of God. Yeah. You can be you. And so here you are, just being you. You're on the BBC. And you start talking about the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm like, what's that about? He just said, the Holy Ghost. He said, what did you say? You met the Holy Spirit or something <laughs> yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm looking at Martin Basher and I'm thinking, does he even know? Wow. You know, that the, you use the language there yeah. that's, that's obviously to a Christian is, we, we don't understand what you're talking about. Yeah. I thought that was a huge witness, my friend. You know, you can only, <laughs> you can only give out what you've got within. That's wow. good, that's good. You know, that's and, good. and for me, I find it hard to give out anything else mm. that is not authentic, because yeah. it's not in me anyway. <laughs> I can only give out what's within me. Love it. You know, and I, so anytime I get a platform to share the gospel, I have to give out what's within. And I want to encourage uh, the listeners out there that God is going to create platforms for you. Not man, God will create these platforms. And once he's creates some platforms for you, you have to give out what's within you. You know, because people need to hear that. People need to be encouraged. People need to be motivated. And the only truth is, is God that's creating all of these platforms. You know, so we need to, we need to really... We, we really need to embrace what we've got within us. Because what we've got in us is power. Yeah. It's life. It's not normal. Say that again. It's not, no, what we've got in us is power and it's life. Yeah. It's not normal. You know, when you, go to, when you go to places where God's created an amazing platform for you, you know, you have to give out what's within you. You know, I, 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 you guys make me feel like getting back in the gym. You really, I'm not joking tonight. I'm, I'm really, really feeling it. Let me just read this. I just saw an email from Lorna Petty. Lorna Petty. Praise God for you all tonight. Love your passion. May God favor you all. See, see, people, it doesn't matter what age you are. Mm. Passion is passion. Wow. Yeah. You can pick it up. You can, you can feel the fire. Yeah. There's a fire in the studio tonight, and many, many people are picking up on it. Um, you know what? Okay, we'll pray for you. Somebody says, please pray for my family tonight. The devil has us under attack. We've got a couple of prayer warriors in here tonight, so oh, I right. know we'll, at some point tonight, we are going to... <laughs> Yemi yeah, says, I'm glued to the TV. <laughs> I finished work, but I can't leave you guys and go home. Praise God. I just really am enjoying... Yeah, that's interesting. That's a good point. Okay, here's from Jill. She says... Excellent program, Hugh. Is there anything for teenage girls out there? But are girls the problem? Let's talk about that. I mean, I saw a girl in your video. Yeah, we've got a lot of girls that attend Box Up Crime, you know, and, you know, I believe girls are... The devil's trying to attack everyone. He's trying to attack the girls, he's trying to attack the guys. When I was you a know? kid in East London, where you live, mm. I mean, I, you know, if people didn't know it, <laughs> my mum will absolutely destroy me for saying this, but I was out nicking and, and, and shoplifting and doing all kinds of nonsense when I was a kid. You know, you just get into the wrong crowd and all this yeah. stuff. I've just ruined my image forever. Who cares? Because that's what testimony is about, right? But you know what? There was girls. Girls yeah. were doing it girls too. It wasn't like it was yeah. just guys that were doing it. Mm. It was girls. And I'm sure it hasn't gotten any better. Mm. Can I just say this? I want to say this because there's something, I was talking to some young people in, in, in my own family, guys.
And when I hear them say things like, they can't go, now you can tell us about this because people don't have any idea, mm -hmm. but they say they can't go from this area to that area. What's that about? They can't, they get, if you live in Harlesden, you can't go to, to another area that's just down the road. Mm. Because if you go down there, it's controlled by different guys. Yeah. And you hear the young people saying these things and you think, what? Yeah. In London, is that for real? And then there's the drug culture, yeah. right? <coughs> the, 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 these guys that are being groomed. You were talking to me about that. Tell the viewers what's going on. These young kids are being groomed by drugs. Tell them. It is hard. It is hard out there, you know. Even last night alone, I had a young person that has been missing for two weeks. Two weeks. His parents have been complaining. His mom's been phoning me every night. Uh, Stephen, my son, my son, he's not come home. He's not come home. And straight away, when, the first, when she first phoned me, said, my son's not come home, I knew exactly where her son is. His son, her son's 14 years old. Yeah. I knew exactly where her son is. Her son's in country. And that's what they call it. They call it country, they call it out there, I'm going OT, that basically means I'm going out there, you know, and what happens is you get older guys in their 23s, 25s, 28s, older guys, and what they do, they pick up these younger guys, these 13 year olds, these 14 year olds, and they, they will drive past with them in a nice car, you know, and they'll say, you, you like this car, do you know where I've got this car from? I've got this car from working in country, right. if you come country me, you'll be making 500 pounds, 600 pounds a week, and I'll be paying you every single week. So they sell them a dream. You know, they buy them some nice trainers, they show them love, and before you know it, that kid's in that car, and they're being inspired by that older guy. And they're looking at this older guy like, you know, this is a role model, this is somebody I want to be like, you know. And now that guy's taking them on a three-hour journey to somewhere like uh, Basingstoke or Cambridge or Edinburgh. And now these kids are there now, they all want to come back home. But the thing is, they're not allowed to come back home. Oh, that's what's going on. You know, on. and, you know, what happened was, the situation is a young kid, he phones me and he says, Stephen, I, I don't want to be here. I really don't want to be here. I said, text me your address right now. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming. I know, I've been on the streets. I know how it goes. I know the implications if the kid was to phone the police and the police was to... It's, it's, it, it, like, what happens is they put these kids on debt. Like, so a lot of them, they'll give the kids drugs to sell and then they'll rob the drugs off the kids. So now the kid will be in debt to the drug dealer. The food thing, I've heard exactly. about the food and it's, thing. And it's like, this is the culture that's going on, not just in Barking or not just in London, across the capital. Yeah. How, how common is this? Yeah. How common is this? You know, like, so obviously where we live now, and I was born in Bedford, which is known as country, that's what they call it, and we've recognised and noticed how these guys are coming from London now into Lute and Milton yeah, Keynes, Bedford. Yeah. And I've got a, a friend of mine, he's a teacher in Milton Keynes, and he's even said that, you know, that this is what's happening, that mm. guys are coming from London into these areas and it's, you know, because we never used to have gun crime and stuff in, in <coughs> Bedford. It's, yeah. it's always been known, yeah. known in London and their areas. But recently we've been seeing a lot of that happen in Bedford and Milton Keynes and it's all coming yeah. from, you know, so just to piggy bank of what you're saying, oh. mm. it's, it's, it's incredible, it's crazy. Daniel, know? we'll get you to pray in just a sure. minute for, for any viewers that might be watching, no particularly for the young people. Yeah. And, you know, I just feel like God's going to give you words mm. of wisdom, by the way, when yeah. you're praying. But yeah. and please, if you feel like praying as well, we just... We, I think we should pray for a few people. Mm. Um, I just find this whole subject very, very fascinating. Mm. And I think that we should do regular programs. I really do. I think we should do regular programs that just have a focus on trying to reach the youth. Yeah. I think it's very, very, I think it's vitally important, actually. And I think that, you know, people who are watching and, and don't get it, you know, uh, don't turn the channel. Don't, you know, don't do that because it, you know, we've, you know, maybe we've lived our life and it's like, well, forget about them. That's not the right attitude, I think. Mm -hmm. We should be thinking about the young people and we should 100%. be... The passion that these guys have, the passion that you have for the sick and for, the pe for people who don't know Jesus, the passion that you have for the youth and, and, and those who need... Uh, I love the fact that you're, you're actually giving them not just a sport, but you're giving them something to focus on in their lives yeah. and that you're dealing with the ones that nobody else... Can, who cares about those kids? Mm. The ones that are the worst ones. You they just... I'll just forget them. They'll just they'll they'll become nothing. But God takes. <laughs> remember the old remember Reinhard Bonnke. Yeah. Reinhard Bonnke used to say. Uh, I hope I get it right. 
He says, but you know, there's some people in this life that, that people call a zero, they're nothing. Wow. But then when you take the zero and you introduce them to one, number one wow. as Jesus, Come on. now they become 10. Wow. You get another, G, yeah. another zero. I'm not very good, I'm not right out wow. bulky. But you get another, find another zero, wow. you become 100. Wow. You find another zero, you become 1,000. You find another zero, 10,000, 100,000. This on. is the kind of message that we need to, mm. we need to get out there. And I think we we should do it very, very much more often. Praise God. Um, did I hear right? Um, um, oh, did I hear right from Stephen? Did he say that Martin Bashir was led of the Lord? That was there, but it's vanished. I don't quite know what that is about. Here's somebody asking for prayer. You know what? I think it might be a moment just to begin to pray for a few people. If you don't mind, sure. uh, Daniel, I'll call on you to do that. Someone says, we had a few earlier on who were saying that they were sick. And I think that's, that's okay. You know, you, you talked about the spiritual battles and somebody says that they're battling s stage four cancer, mm. uh, chest, liver, bones, and lymph. He says, the Christians here have given up on praying. Mm. And I guess he must have heard what you said about not giving up. Mm. And he says, he, I suspect demons were involved in my case. And he's asking for deliverance. He's asking for prayer. And he says, it's refreshing to see Daniel doesn't give up. I too have been listening to Smith Smith Wigglesworth, you say, I'm writing a book for the glory of God and proud to have you in it, Daniel. You're in his book, apparently. Wow. He says, please keep me in prayer. Sorry, say he, she. Sorry, you sounded so masculine there. I thought it was a, a man, but it's Mary. Thanks for writing in, Mary. And um, let me read a few more. Marion in uh, North Wales says, uh, hi, Hugh, Daniel and Stephen. How amazing is our God. Blessing to those young men, indeed. I look forward to seeing that, that them develop their ministries you say you're an old lady but i bet you're not i bet you're young at heart and you say you don't particularly like boxing but god he makes me smile at the wonder of his ways and i get the state of our nation's young people I was watching yemi and uh, and um, we've only got three minutes left but real quick i was watching yemi and leslie <coughs> when we right after the tyson fury fight okay and uh, leslie was like oh, i don't like boxing <laughs> and uh, yemi, yemi had just been at my house and we were praying for tyson fury to win wow. but we've got some time just to sure. pray can yeah. i could turn to you sure, and just yeah. get you to just pray as you feel led for tonight yeah. take the camera yeah. and pray as you sure. feel led for yeah. tonight as you feel led yeah. by the holy ghost yeah thanks yeah. father in the name of jesus yes. christ we just pray for every viewer yes. watching every young person every middle-aged person, every old person. Lord, give them a passion for you, Jesus. Amen. A passion yeah. to live for you, to leave the darkness and come into the light, mm. to leave the things of the world and surrender to you. And Lord, I even take this, take this moment to take authority over every sickness and disease right now. Lord, we stand on your holy written word in Luke 10, 19, where we have been given authority over serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. And right now, Lord, we take authority over cancer, yes. depression, yes. suicide, prostitution, yes. manipulation, every demonic sickness, every disease. Today, from this studio, we speak directly to your situation yes. and we command you to get into the sea. Be gone. Get yes. out in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I speak to body parts and I command you, body parts, come alive in Jesus' name. Amen. Wake up right now by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I I want to encourage every young person yes. watching right now. God loves you. God has a plan for your life. Yes. You haven't watched me, Stephen, and Hugh today by accident. Yes. That God has a plan for your life. Turn to Him. Amen. Turn away from your yes. sin. Turn to Him. Get in touch Thank with you. a church, with a ministry. Contact yes. us. And you know, God's got a plan for your life. So Amen. you know, I believe God's touching people through Amen. this Praise through this God. screen right now. You know, I just sense something. Yeah. I'm just going to release that now. Okay. I just sense the Spirit of the Lord have me tell tell you that someone's left eardrum mm -hmm. either has been burst or has been popped mm -hmm. God is healing that right now so if that's you just put your hand there right now mm -hmm. and just agree with me right now mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ yeah. ear pop open right mm -hmm. now yeah. in Jesus name we take authority mm -hmm. over you and we thank you for that healing and even that testimony mm -hmm. to glorify your name alone Lord mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Jesus mighty name Amen. thank Amen. you so Amen. much Amen. Daniel Amen. I'm going to give you the last the last sort of 45 seconds because I yeah. want you to just turn to the camera. You might have a message for a young person that's watching right now, even if it's just 30 seconds. What, what would yeah. you say to a young person who's heard your testimony tonight? I just want to encourage young people all over the capital, you know, God's in control. 
You know, God is good. God's going to win this battle. The devil's not going to steal any more kids. I cancel every spirit of death over London yeah, right man. now in Come Jesus' on. name. And we speak life over London. Yeah. We speak life over London right now. Mm -hmm. And the, the devil's not going to win. He's not going to steal any more dreams because all of the, all, every young person right now is marked right now yeah, for man. good. They're man. marked. They're marked for glory. They're man. marked to be successful leaders. Man. So I just speak life over every young person in Jesus' name. Man. Any parents out there that's having problems with their sons, I speak life over that and I speak praise life over that God, situation. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. They're out of time. The gloves have been off tonight. Wow, what a program. Been full of fire tonight. Thank you for joining us here. Daniel Chand. Daniel Edison, see you next time on The Late Show. Bye-bye. What did I say? Daniel Edison. <laughs>